So it's been about eight months since the allegations of sexual misconduct came out against Chris D'Elia. When it happened, he issued a public apology letter and, and acknowledged that a lot of what was said about him was true, that, that nothing was illegal, but that there was truth in, in the description of his lifestyle and how he had approached women. And he said, look, I'm sorry, I'm going to go work on myself. And then he then he disappeared, right? So it's been eight months. And then a couple of days ago, he posted a video to YouTube, which I will link above. And, he, and it, was, it was essentially a a video apology. And I want to talk about that apology. I want to talk about that approach. I'm not going to weigh in on what he did or didn't do. And I'm not going to weigh in on what his career will look like moving forward. I thought that his apology itself was unique and and, um, worth discussing. So when people get canceled or or, or people get in trouble for something, whatever it is, sexual misconduct, drug abuse, whatever... There seems to be kind of two approaches. One approach is to deal with it head on, and the other approach is to kind of ignore it. And I felt like Chris was taking the I'm going to ignore it approach, right? He waited a long after writing his apology letter. He just disappeared. This this video apology was definitely head on, and I thought it was head on in a very a very appropriate way. I was an imp- I was super impressed with the apology itself. Instead of coming out and saying hey, I made some mistakes, I, I took time working on myself, and I'm ready to re, you know, re-enter society, I'm, gonna, I'm ready to start my career again. He said, look, sex is a problem for me, my career was all about sex, and, and here's what that looked like. He, he was very specific and granular about how that uh, evolved for him, uh, how he used sex to deal with his anxiety and to deal with his, you know, d- loneliness. He he talked a lot about the impact that it's had on his personal life with his fiance, who he had cheated on. It, it, I I felt like he he did a better job of saying he didn't just say I've been working on myself or I'm a sex addict and I have to overcome that. He said I'm a sex addict and here's what that looks like for me. And. and as an audience member, as a viewer, I like the fact that he was specific about it because it makes it real for the audience. It makes it real for me. I understand what he's dealing with. And it also gives me a sense from a kind of a clinical standpoint that he knows where he's at kind of in his in his progress in dealing with this, right? He's talking about how he's been to therapy. He's working on it, but he's not done. He has an ongoing problem and, you know, he's got to continue focusing on that moving forward. So I just feel like there's more self-awareness around that than we typically see in an apology. It felt more sincere than I typically see in an apology. And so, and so for that, for his own kind of well-being, uh, I'm hopeful. But I also want to acknowledge that addicts lie. I want to acknowledge that he is a very charismatic, intelligent guy that definitely has the capacity to maneuver and manipulate something like this to present himself favorably. But I can tell you that if I were treating him and he came in and presented like that, like he did in that apology video, I would say you are in a good place to make changes, right? You understand what the problem is. You understand why the problem happened. And you're willing to make sacrifices to change your behavior moving forward. Chris has a long road to go before he will feel like he has more control over this. But I feel like he's in a really good spot if the video can, if we can trust the video. So I'm curious what others think, those of you that follow him and care about him and think he's funny, uh, what's your perspective on, on, on what this means and, and how the apology, the apology uh, landed? Let me know in the comments. Thanks. Thanks.